Greetings gamers and welcome back to another episode of Perfect Date. I think there are going to be four episodes in Chapter 5 because the scenes are getting longer as we learn more interesting things. But that's okay! Uh, if you remember from last time, we're currently on Chapter 5. We are romancing Kibbles, who is an otaku and only a tiny bit of a jerk. We've got two research, one recon, and two romance left. I love how they all start with R's. So let's get started. Let's do our research. Today's the day Mr. Bumble gets the all clear. He's a tough old boy. I'm looking forward to giving him a cuddle. This makes me sad. The professor lifts the flap of my tent and pokes his head inside. Philippa, may I have a word? Of course, sir. He lets the flap fall shut. I'm not sure what time it is, but it's still dark in my little shelter. I quickly pull my lab coat on over my pajamas and make my way outside to find the professor staring out to sea. Is something wrong, professor? No. Well, yes. I suppose something is wrong. Your Mr. Bumble is getting worse, Philippa. He's taken a turn in the night. Oh my goodness! But he was doing so well. I was going to recommend we release him this week. With older cats, this can be expected. A sudden relapse is common, and they become overwhelmed so quickly. I can't believe it. Is it something I did? Or didn't do? Did, did I miss something? No, Philippa. I trust that you have done your absolute best for him, my dear. But I'm afraid he is in a lot of discomfort now. His words cut like a knife. The thought of any animal being in pain is heartbreaking, but I've grown very attached to Mr. Bumble in the time that I've been caring for him. We do a lot of good on this island, Philippa, and it could truly be a joy to live with these beautiful animals and ensure that they are well and happy. But we also have to do a lot of things that we don't want to. Unpleasant things, you understand, though we always have the best interest of the cats in mind. I feel I know what's coming, but I hope I'm wrong. No, you're not wrong. You just want to be wrong. I get that. Mr. Bumble may live for a while yet, Philippa, but his every waking moment will be full of pain and suffering. It's times like these we must think about what is best for our subjects. The professor takes a deep breath. Mr. Bumble will have to be euthanized, my dear. There's no two ways about that. But I thought it might be nicer for him if you were the one to do it. You could say your goodbyes, stroke him, make him as comfortable as he can be, and then take away his pain with one quick injection of catamine. I'm frozen. I don't want to answer. You don't have to agree, but I wanted to give you the choice. He'll be euthanized tonight. Either way, would you like to be there? This is sad, but I can't let him be alone. I think I should be the one to put Mr. Bumble to sleep. I know it's painful, but I think you've made the right decision, my dear. Let's get this over with as quickly as possible. Mr. Bumble is curled up in his crate. I am a bit taken aback at how well he looks. I had braced myself for a different picture entirely. I'm grateful he doesn't look as sick as he is. Would you like me to prepare the syringe for you while you say your goodbyes? I nod. I can't muster any words. The professor begins preparing the lethal injection. I take this moment to comfort Mr. Bumble through the bars of his crate. I'm worried that if I pick him up, I'll never be able to let him go. I talk to him quietly. Even though he can't understand what I'm saying, I hope my voice will be a comfort to him. It's okay, my friend. Nothing bad will happen to you. Liar! I am surprised to hear the familiar voice of Trixie coming from the shadows in the corner of the lab. I can't believe this! I trusted you! I cough away the sob in my throat. I can't answer Trixie without raising suspicion. I defended you and people called you a traitor. I believed in you, but you're just like him, aren't you? There's nothing wrong with that cat. Mr. Bumble is as healthy as I am! You've been unwell for a while, haven't you, Mr. Bumble? It's getting worse every day. It's time to do the kindest thing possible for you, even though it breaks my heart. I hope Trixie understands that I'm talking to her. She scoffs. 
He's fooled you too. I thought you were smarter than that. Can you not see what's going on here? The professor turns to me glumly and places the tray of supplies on the table next to the crate. The injection is ready if you'll finish saying your goodbyes. I hesitate, feeling the professor's shrewd eyes on me. I can't watch this. I see Trixie's shadow slink out of the tent. I think delaying things any longer would only make the situation more distressing. I trust Trixie more than I trust the professor and his basement full of parts. I'm sorry, professor, but could I have a few minutes alone with Bumble? I would like to brush his coat one last time. Certainly, my dear. I'll leave you to finish the procedure. No need to report back to me tonight. Just head back to your tent and I'll talk to you in the morning. Message me if you have any problems. Professor pokes a finger into Mr. Bumble's crate and whispers a few words that are just out of my earshot. He squeezes my shoulder paternally before leaving the lab. I immediately open the crate and hold the cat protectively to my chest. You're staying with me, boy. I whisper the words into his ear. Something in my gut tells me that the professor is listening outside the lab. If we can't leave through the main entrance, we'll need to find another way out. My mind races wildly. I stroke the large cat with my free hand. His rhythmic purring helps me to concentrate better. I suddenly see an image of Trixie in my mind's eye. Where did she go? How did she get out? I search every corner of, on the tent for an opening or broken stake in the ground. Finally, I find a tear in the fabric behind some of the cages, and I'm able to squeeze through it with Mr. Bumble in my vice-like grip. My body switches to autopilot and takes me to the only place I could think to go. Trixie's cave. I guess that makes sense. You've got a whole island, but Trixie was the last cat to talk to you. The cave is unusually dark and cold. She must be out. I write a short note explaining that I couldn't go through with euthanasia and that I'll be back at the lab covering my tracks tonight. I use one of her minerals, Floofy Butt, as a paperweight and make sure Mr. Bumble is settled and sleeping before I make my way back to the tent. Achievement unlocked! Save Mr. Bumble! Yes! New unlocks! Research 14. Good, we can finish the chapter now. But not now. We've got other stuff to do. We'll do a romance, then a rest, then we'll see how we're doing. I haven't seen Kibble since our pizza party the other night. I want to make sure he didn't overdo it once he left my tent. I approach the clearing near the bushes he likes to hide in. Kibbles, are you there? No answer. Kibbles? The bush sneezes. Chew! I know you're in there, Kibbles. You just sneezed. Still no answer. Kibbles? If you don't come out here, I'm coming in to get you. Kibbles lazily rolls out of the bushes. Oh, hi, Philippa. I, uh, I didn't hear you coming. Kibbles, are you avoiding me? No, I've just been really busy. I pull a sticky sweet wrapper out of his long fur. Yes, I can see that. Is everything okay? I've been worried about you. You left so quickly the other night. Well, I figured the night was over with you about to lose your guts outside. Well, then you will be pleased to know that I was not, in fact, sick. I did feel terrible all night, though. What were we thinking? What were... What were you thinking, you mean? I happen to know my limits. Except that you were sick on the way home, weren't you? How did you know about that? I didn't until just now. Ooh. It was worth it. We should do that again. Not with me, you won't. So, what's been keeping you away? I've been working on my project. Project? What's that? Just my latest comic. Comic? You made one? Yeah, I've been working on it for ages. You're the first person I've told about it. Well, I'm honored. Tell me more. What's it about? Can I see it? It's about a lot of stuff. You can have it, actually. Really? Kibbles hands me a stack of papers covered with crude markings, held together with tape and staples. Oh, it's 
Nice. It's just a first draft. That'll be worth loads to the right collector. Yeah, Yurik is quite avant-garde. I was worried that being a cat would limit my artistic ability, but obviously I'm a savant. Oh yeah, for sure, and, well, it has a unique smell, doesn't it? It's hard to get pens and paints out here. I had to get pretty creative. Something tells me I'd rather not know too much about his creative techniques. Thank you for this, Kebbles. I'll read it as soon as I get back to base. Yeah, well, it's pretty complex. You might not get everything on your first read-through. I look at the scratchings, paw prints, and splatters that make up the pages of this rare first edition. No doubt. Maybe once I've read it, we can go through it together? Yeah, okay, you'll probably need my help. Right, I'll go make a start then. Thanks again, Kebbles. That's really sweet. Fabulous. Gonna do a quick rest. Get a lovely nap, wake up feeling revitalized. Your energy has been restored. Magic! Okay, so one more thing. We're gonna do that last recon. I really want to know what that comic book was about, guys. And then I think after that, we'll call it an episode finish everything up afterwards. Scanning Kibble's Gift. It might be worth taking a closer look at the comic Kibble's made. We've got sad music in the background. Or, well, thoughtful music at least. I'm laying in my tent, looking at the comic Kibble's made. It's a really heartwarming thing. He's put a lot of work into it. As I'm looking, I notice something behind some of the colors. It looks like Kibbles might have painted over something he found. I could just about make out a signature in the lower right corner. The more I squint, the more I believe it's Professor Poppers. I wonder what this used to be. I suppose it would be possible to clean off the paint and see what's underneath, but I can't bring myself to do that. Maybe there's something at the lab I can use to see more without destroying the artwork? I arrive at the lab just after dark, and I'm guaranteed to have the place to myself. There's a portable x-ray machine in the back. We use it to examine the bones of the cats after changing their diet. It has a light box attached to it so that we can see the x-rays properly. It's this piece of equipment that I'm hoping will reveal the secrets under Kibble's work of art. I lay out the comic on top of the light box. I can see the image quite clearly under the paint. It's a letter. Dear Jonathan, Firstly, I would like to wish yourself and Martha a very happy new year. I understand your concerns. The recent closure of our account at your cat farm may indeed negatively impact your business. I can assure you, this decision was not taken lightly. I would like to take the time to personally thank you and your family for your help in providing us with cats over the years. From your last letter, it's clear that you don't fully understand our reasoning. The traditional methods of farming cats have, as you pointed out, been perfectly acceptable for many years. However, recent advances in technology that our team have employed mean that we are able to produce cats on a far greater scale and much more quickly than using the traditional methods. Our offshore facility can produce 100 cats in the time it would take you to rear 10. I would, however, like to repeat our offer of a job in the offshore nursery. Your family has been an asset to this company for many years, and we would like to show you our loyalty and appreciation. Please do consider this offer seriously. Warm wishes and season's greetings from Professor Popper and team. Oh, I didn't know it was Professor Popper. I would have read it in his voice. Offshore facility, though. Oh, that's disturbing. An offshore cat breeding facility? We have an island overrun with cats right here. Why would we need... Before I can even form the question in my mind, I know what the answer is. This island is the offshore facility. Professor Popper was obviously keeping it well under wraps. I look back at Kibble's sweet picture and wonder how on earth he had this letter in his possession. Slowly, another thought begins to force its way into my consciousness. What if Jonathan and Martha accepted the offer that was made to them and came to work on the island? What if they brought their young son with them? Could this be Kibble's parents? I decide to respect Kibble's privacy and keep this information to myself. He may not remember any of this, and I don't want to distress him. Wow, guys. Wow. Wow. 
That's one hell of a revelation. I think I'm going to call it an episode here and process what I just learned. <laughs> and then we will come back to finish up the last romance and research and get through chapter five. So uh, thank you again for watching. I hope you all enjoyed. I hope you're as baffled as I am. We've learned a lot of interesting things in this chapter, haven't we? Poor Kibbles. I mean, it would make sense why he's got the comic books and, and the Kanashi boy and the penguin backpack and why he's kind of a jerk he's probably a teenager stuck in the cat's body anyway uh thank you all so much for watching remember to like if you liked it subscribe if you haven't watch our other videos i know raceable's been doing a series of magic the gathering if you like magic i would check them out and as always keep on gaming